Hi everyone, it's uh, Mrs. Willis here with this week's Read Aloud. I um, wanted to read today Grandma's Gift by Eric Velasquez. Um, it is one of my favorites. Last week I read Grandma's Records, um, which is also by Eric Velasquez. Um, and I shared last week that it's just such an important story to me because it was the first time I actually saw myself, like my culture represented in a children's story. So um, I hope that you enjoyed last week's read aloud. And then um, I'll be reading Grandma's Gift today. Just a little bit of background on the book. Um, there are going to be phrases in Spanish. I'll follow up with the phrases in English so that you don't lose meaning. Um, and also the focus of the book is one of my very favorite Puerto Rican foods ever, pateles. Uh, I remember being a little girl in my grandmom's kitchen and having her, watching her make them. It's a very time consuming process, um, but it is a food that um, I just adore. And so, uh, and it's the highlight and the focus of this book as well. So I hope you enjoy this week's read aloud. Let's make sure you guys can see the pictures there. All right. Feliz Navidad, Eric. My teacher walked me to the classroom door where my grandmother was waiting to take me back to her apartment for my winter break. I used to spend all my school vacations with her so she could take care of me while my parents worked. Before we left, my teacher handed grandma a note about our holiday project. The Metropolitan Museum of Art had just bought a famous painting and I had to go see it and write a report. On our way home, Grandma asked me to translate the note because she couldn't read English. I translate a lot of things for Grandma. Sometimes I felt like I was going to school for two people. All the note said was, Metropolitan Museum of Art, 82nd Street and 5th Avenue, second floor, new exhibit. But for now, I had 10 whole days of freedom. And the Christmas time in El Barrio was always like magic. Everyone was out in the streets shopping for food and gifts, and Grandma was ready to join them. So we dropped off my suitcase and headed straight to La Marqueta, the market, one of my favorite places. This special group of shops and stalls sat under the elevated train tracks, and all the stalls rumbled and shook whenever a train passed overhead. Grandma could find everything she needed there year round, fruits, vegetables, fish, meat, clothing, and even her favorite records. But that day, Grandma was shopping only for the ingredients for pateles, the traditional Christmas dish for Puerto Ricans. She promised that if I helped her make the pateles this year, she would take me to the museum. Our first stop was the produce stand to buy the root vegetables. Estoy buscando calabaza, yatilla, plátanos verdes, guineos verdes. Grandma said to the first vendor, I'm looking for pumpkins, taro root, green plantains, green bananas, and potatoes. Pues aquí tenemos los mejores. Well, here we have the best. All the vendors knew that Grandma would only buy the best ingredients for her famous pateles. When they agreed on the price, Grandma said, Gracias y Feliz Navidad. Thank you and Merry Christmas. Our next stop was the butcher stand. ¿Cuál pedazo te gusta, Doña Carmen? Alberto asked. Which piece do you like, Miss Carmen? Se ve bueno. Dame cuatro libras, Grandma said. That one is good. Give me four pounds. After that, our last stop was Doña Juanita's Bodega for parchment wrapping paper, banana leaves, string, and El Barrio's latest gossip. The worst part of the trip was carrying the heavy shopping bags up five flights of stairs to Grandma's apartment. As soon as she took off her coat, Grandma headed straight to the kitchen and went right to work peeling and grating the root vegetables by hand, never with a blender. If you want it to taste traditional, you must make it traditionally, she always said. When I asked her where she learned to grate so fast, she only answered, you should have seen my mother grate. 
While she worked, Grandma asked me to choose some records to set the mood. Siempre me gusta su selección. I always like your selection. As Grandma put the meat on to simmer, she told me stories about her life in Santurce, Puerto Rico. But she really had to concentrate when it came to wrapping the pateles, the hardest part of the recipe. First, Grandma carefully laid out a sheet of parchment paper with a piece of banana leaf on top. Then she poured a little anato oil on the leaf and added la masa, the dough, and la carne, the meat, with a valley scooped out in the middle for la salsa, the sauce. For the finishing touch, she folded everything together to form a perfect rectangle and tied each one with string so it looked like an old fashioned parcel. And although these are illustrations, I mean, they're so accurate. It's like someone could have taken photographs. They're so good. While the pasteles were boiling for an hour, Grandma said, Estos pasteles van a ser los mejores porque están hechos especialmente para ti. These pasteles are going to be the best ever because I am making them just for you. But I knew that I'd have to share them with the rest of the family and friends who came to visit. She also always handed them out to her favorite vendors as she shopped for all of her gifts. Look at all of them there. Patenes aren't something that you make a little bit of. Because it's so time consuming, you usually make a really big um, amount. And you can freeze them in the freezer too. The Tuesday morning before Christmas, Grandma woke up and announced that we were going to the museum so I could write my report before all the toys I would get for the holiday distracted me. Grandma never really traveled beyond the 20 blocks that made up El Barrio, where she knew everyone and everyone knew her. I could tell she was nervous, but I couldn't help being excited. The museum was a short ride down Fifth Avenue, but the neighborhood was completely different. When we got off the bus right in front of the museum, we didn't see anyone from Puerto Rico on the streets and no one was speaking Spanish. As we walked up the steps and through the doors to the admission booth, I saw Grandma searching the crowd for a familiar face. Then she asked me to read what it said above the booth. I explained that it said to pay what you wish. This made Grandma nervous and unsure about what to do. She fumbled through her purse and handed the clerk some money with shaky hands. Once inside, we went up the large flight of stairs to the gallery on the second floor, as my teacher had directed in her note. All the paintings there were beautiful. ¿Qué dice ahí? What does it say there? Grandma would frequently ask me to translate the caption written next to each painting. Suddenly, Grandma turned and said, Oye, Juan de Pareja, ¿qué haces tú ahí? Hey, Juan de Pareja, what are you doing there? Grandma finally recognized someone from El Barrio. But she wasn't talking to a person. She was talking to a painting. And it was the most magnificent of all of them. I quickly ran up and read the caption next to it. Grandma, it says Juan de Pareja was a slave and an assistant to the great painter Diego Velázquez. He later set De Pareja free and De Pareja became a great artist himself. We both stood there just staring at the amazing painting. The gentleman seemed to be looking back at us. He seemed so real, much like someone we might see walking around in Barrio. I couldn't believe that this was a painting in a museum. That evening, my parents brought arroz con gandules and lechon, rice with pigeon peas and roast pork, to have with Grandma's delicious pateles for Christmas Eve dinner. While we ate, Grandma and I told them all about our museum adventure. Grandma explained that she had learned about Juan de Pareja when she was growing up in Puerto Rico. We all told stories and listened to music until midnight when Grandma brought out a gift for me. I ripped off the wrapping paper to find my very own sketchbook 
and my first set of colored pencils. As we listened to Aguinaldo Puerto Riqueño, my favorite Christmas carol, I took out my pencils and began to draw my first self-portrait. And then there's an author's note. Um, Diego Velasquez's portrait of Juan de Pareja had a profound and lasting effect on me. I grew up in a time when there were very few images of people of African descent in children's books. All of my heroes, sadly, did not look like me. The portrait of Juan de Pareja showed me for the first time that my people were a part of history and not just a casualty of it. He stands so nobly in front of the viewer as though he wants to tell you his story. The fact that Juan de Pareja was also an accomplished painter himself inspired me to dream of such possibilities for myself. I believe that I am an artist today because of that painting. Yes, it was that inspiring. After our visit to the museum, my grandma and I went on lots of outings. We visited most of the museums in New York City, as well as the Empire State Building and the World Trade Center. But that day at the museum will always be magical to me. So I, oh, and here's the coolest part, is that this is the drawing that he did, the painting that he did of him and his grandma. And then right here is an actual photograph of the two of them. It's so neat. So I hope that you enjoyed this book, um, this read aloud for this week. I absolutely love Eric Velasquez and his books. Um, he's illustrated a lot of other books as well. Um, but if you get the opportunity to actually look at these pictures up close, um, you won't be disappointed. They're remarkable. So I hope you enjoyed this week's read aloud and I will see you guys next week.